Hello students, welcome to the channel. In this video, we'll solve the first writing passage of the May 2017 US SAT, New National Parks. Under the Antiquities Act of 1906, the Organic Act of 1916, and other federal laws, the US government has the power to take custody of land when having historical significance or great natural beauty. Now, I need to choose the correct option here. So I'm saying the US government has the power to take custody of land and that land has historical significance or great natural beauty, right? So I should just say that has, because that refers to the land. So option C should be the right answer. Uh, when having is not the right construction because when is used for time and I'm not, talking about time here, I'm talking about the quality of the land. So option A is not correct. Similarly, for its having is not the right construction. And for it has is also not the right construction. I need to choose a concise option that conveys the quality of the land. So C. The designation of a territory as a national park, national monument, or other types of protected area can limit activities such as oil drilling and logging and provide funding for staff to work on preservation, maintenance, and visitor assistance. Okay, so here I have to follow parallel structure. I'm talking about the designation of a territory as a national park. So that's a singular noun. National monument, again, a singular noun or other type of protected area. Right, I have to continue with singular to maintain a uh, parallel structure. So B should be my right answer. Types is plural, so it's not A. Areas is plural, so it's not C. And this is also plural. So the best answer is B. Federally protected lands are extremely popular with 270 million visitors each year to national parks alone. But in recent years, critics have complained that these public lands are a burden on the federal budget that limits economic development. In fact, however, maintaining and expanding the land under public protection would be an economic benefit to many parts of the US. Okay, so here I have to choose the correct preposition. Federally protected lands are extremely popular with 270 million visitors each year. So the way it's written seems fine. So I'm going to keep this. Now being 270 million visitors each year, that is not the right construction. Being is not used in this way. To have 270 million visitors is also incomplete. I need to say a preposition or I need to use something else. So it's not C. And some 270 million visitors years is also incomplete. So the best answer is option A. Some commentators claim that there is an excess of too many pressing constraints on the federal budget to commit funds to federal land protection. Okay, so this is a redundancy because I can see that excess and too many mean the same thing. So I don't need to say both. So option A is out. There is too much of an excess of, again, it's redundant. So B is out. In abundance, too many, again redundant. So D is the best answer. Some commentators claim that there are too many pressing constraints on the federal budget. But the 2014 budgets of the National Park Service, Fish and Wildlife Service, Forest Service, and Bureau of Land Management total significantly less than 1% of the national budget, hardly enough to make a considerable difference in overall government spending. Where protection does have a major impact is in local communities. Visitors to protected lands need food, fuel, and lodging, and businesses that cater to these needs provide job opportunities in the surrounding communities. Okay, so here I have to choose the correct punctuation, and I'm saying where protection does have a major economic impact is in local communities. So that's one sentence. 
and visitors to protected lands need food, fuel, and lodging, and businesses that cater to these needs provide opportunities. So that's the second sentence. So I have two independent sentences, so I should place a period between them. So option D is the best answer. Option A is a run-on sentence because I have not put any punctuation, so that's wrong. Okay, if I put a semicolon, then I will not say while because a semicolon, after semicolon, I'll have an independent sentence and while will uh, go against that, so it's not B. And a comma between two independent sentences leads to a comma splice error, which is not permitted. So C is also wrong. In the Western US, federal control of large areas of land has been a source of political controversy. According to a report from Headwaters Economics, a research group that studies land management in the West, rural counties with more than 30% of their land under federal protection saw job growth of more than 300% from 1970 to 2010. Which choice provides the best introduction to the paragraph? Okay, let's read a little more. Rural counties with no protected land saw smaller increases in employment than did counties with protected land. A look at the economic effects of Yellowstone National Park reveals the profound impact protected lands can have in a rural region. So here I'm talking about the benefits of uh, a protection of land on the employment scenario, right? So how a protected land increases employment compared to counties that did not have protected land, right? So in the Western US, federal control has been a source of controversy. That's not the best introduction because that is not introducing the advantage of uh, protecting lands. The influx of money from tourism is particularly important in areas such as the Western US, where most uh, federally protected lands are located. Um, okay, yeah, that could make sense because I'm talking about the benefits, so I'm going to keep this for now. The national park that has the most dramatic economic impact on the surrounding area is Yellowstone National Park, which is spread across parts of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. No, so this is a very specific example of a national park, but here I'm talking about a general uh, description of the Western US, right? I'm talking about studies done in the West, so I don't like C. It is often a challenge to balance the interests of local industries with those of visitors to federally protected lands. So here I'm not talking about the interests of industries versus those of visitors. So the best answer would be B. Which choice provides accurate and relevant information from the graph? Okay, so I need to look at this graph. So let me just read this again. Um, rural counties with more than 30% of land under federal production, protection saw job growth of more than this. Okay, so rural counties with more than 30% protected land saw job growth of 345%. So that is more than 300%. And is it from 1970 to 2010? Yes, that is correct. So I like option A. Uh, okay, rural counties with more than 30% of the land saw slightly less job growth than those with less than 10% of the lands. Uh, no, that is not correct. More than 30% is 345 and less than is 108. So B is wrong. Um, yeah, rural counties with more than 30% of their land in, under federal protection had rates of job growth that were considerably higher than those of rural counties in the eastern US. Um, no, this is only about the west, right? There is no mention of east in the graph, so it's not C. They saw job growth decline from 350% to under 300%. No, so this is also wrong. It's 345%. Uh, so A is the best answer. 
A look at the economic effects of Yellowstone National Park reveals the profound impact protected lands can have in a rural region. In 2013, Yellowstone had more than 3 million tourists. They spent a total of nearly $380 million in and around the park. Okay, so which choice combines the sentences? Yellowstone had more than 3 uh, million tourists who spent a total of, right? Because I'm just talking about the tourists and they spent a total of, so C, is a good option. The ones who spent doesn't make sense because I don't have to say the ones. So A is not right. Spent was is incorrect. This is not an independent sentence, so can't come after a semicolon. And but they spent introduces a contradiction into the sentence, which is not required, right? So the best answer is C. Okay, so they spent a total of 380 million in and around the park. At this point, the writer wants to use information from the table below, which choice provides accurate and relevant evidence from the table to support the paragraph's claim. Okay, so I'm talking about how these parks have boosted the rural economy in the West and how, you know, these tourists um, 3 million of them spent a total of $380 million. Okay, these tourists made up nearly 97% of all the visitors to the park in that year. Uh, the person from tourists, yeah, this is a true statement. Uh, so they made, okay, so I'm talking about the economic contribution. So yeah, I'll keep it for now. This incoming money was enough to support more than 5,000 jobs in the Yellowstone region. Okay, yeah. So this is also a good option. I think I should talk about job creation, right? Yeah, because I'm talking about the profound impact that tourist numbers have had. So I think B is better because that talks about job creation. Residents of the region tended to spend less money in and around the parks than tourists did. Um, percentage from tourists is 97 and okay, and from tourists is uh, three, wait, we are talking about, yeah, so I don't think it's about, there's a comparison, so between residents and tourists. So I don't think this is an accurate option. As per visitor spending in the park shows, visiting Yellowstone is a relatively economical vacation. No, so that's not the point. The point is not about how economical it is. The point is about job creation in the Yellowstone region. So uh, B is the best answer, right? A is an accurate answer, but it is not a relevant answer. It doesn't support the claim of uh, job creation as well as B does. Many communities in the US could gain significant tourist revenue if sites of natural beauty or historical significance, such as Idaho's Boulder White Clouds in Utah's uh, Cedar Mesa Plateau were granted national park status. So here I don't need any punctuation because many communities could gain revenue is the independent clause. And if sites of natural beauty were granted national park status, that's the dependent clause, right? So when I have the dependent clause after the independent clause, I don't need any uh, punctuation. So D should be the answer. Um, this colon is anyway wrong because colon is used to explain something and I can't have a dependent clause after that. Um, I can't have these two commas here this comma has already been explained why it's wrong and this comma is wrong because it's just a straight sentence, natural beauty or historical significance. So B is not correct. And again, I can't have a comma after this. So D is the best answer. Given the economic benefits of protecting these and other proposed wilderness areas around the country, additional laws are needed to ensure that the natural historical legacy of the US is preserved for future generations. Mm, okay, I don't think I'm talking about the natural and historical legacy in the passage, right? 
So I don't like A. Uh, yeah. National parks would provide more economic gains if they were managed like businesses. No, again, it's not about managing them like businesses. That's not the point of the passage. It is time for the federal government to consider an additional investment in protected lands. Yeah, this is a good answer because the whole passage is about how government spending on national parks would be beneficial to these parks because it would not affect the government budget that much, but it would have a profound impact on the economy. And protected land should be extended to more urban parts of the country as well. No, we are not saying that they should be extended to urban parts. So the best answer is C. Okay, let's grade this. Starting with question one. Uh, C, B, A, double D. C, B, A, double D. And B, A, C, B, D, C. B, A, C, B, D, C. Okay, great. So we got all correct. Hope this exercise helped. I'll see you guys in a new video soon. Take care. Bye-bye.